Coming up next on the Commissioner's Report, we're going to talk about the exciting growth and redevelopment currently going on in the downtown Winter Haven corridor. Commissioner Todd Dancer will be along to share some of the details. And did you know that June is the official start of the hurricane season? But more importantly, are you ready and do you have a plan? We're going to help you get a plan. It's all straight ahead on this edition of the Commissioner's Report. Again, everyone, welcome to another edition of the Commissioner's Report. I'm Mike Moore. Now, coming up on the program, we're going to be talking about uh, hurricane safety and preparedness. It's June, so it's the official beginning of hurricane season. You may not know that, but you do need to be ready, hopefully, for the storm that doesn't come our way. But we're going to begin by talking with Commissioner Todd Dantzler and a guest, Bud Strang, about redevelopment in downtown Winter Haven. Commissioner, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Nigel. It's good to be here. Yep. And Bud, I appreciate you being here as well. Thank you. Good to let be me, here. Let me start with you first because we're going to talk about redevelopment. I want to understand your company, 610 LLC, is a major player, has a major role in all that's going on down there in downtown Winter Haven. Tell us a little bit about your involvement. Well, 610 has been involved in the downtown for uh, 15 years plus. We initially started uh, acquiring property um, on, a, on a small scale, but in the last five years, we've really sort of accelerated our, our, um, our acquisition and development, and um, have got a number of, we think, exciting projects going on in the downtown. Yeah, we want to talk about many of those projects, and including give you a little bit of a tour uh, around this, uh, the downtown corridor in Winter Haven. Now, Commissioner, I know this is where you were born and raised yep. and still live. Yep. Uh, what's so special about Winter Haven? It's keeping you there. Um, my family's there. Uh, I know people. Uh, it's a great place to raise family, raise kids. Uh, the lakes are phenomenal. We all grew up, we grew up on the same lake, actually. And uh, so you ski and fish all day when you're not in school. You come home in our neighborhood where we lived. We had all guys, so we always had a football game or a or a baseball game or whatever. Um, the quality of life is outstanding. It's not so big that you can't get around. If you want to go to Tampa, Orlando for, you know, something nicer than what they may have in, in Winter Haven, it's an hour away. So uh, it's just been a great place for me to, to be raised by my parents and for me to be able to raise my kids. You think sometimes Winter Haven gets kind of forgotten outside of Polk County because they, if they think Polk County, they think maybe Lakeland, which, which is the biggest city. And then of course there's always Cypress Gardens which, and now Legoland, but maybe they don't realize all that there is that's downtown and is still continuing to be there. Right, um, obviously Lakeland is the biggest town in the, in the county, so they do garner the most airplay, whatever, whatever the term may be. But Winter Haven has got a plan in place. We've got land to grow and to develop. And um, I don't know whether it's a secret or not, but you know, Cypress Gardens uh, has been in Winter Haven since they were born in their 30s. And now Legoland's taken it over a couple years ago. And uh, Cypress Gardens and Lego have certainly brought us a great amount of notoriety. And I imagine with Legoland and, and the new hotel that just opened in May, that brings people there to stay there for a couple days. There's also business like the, the CSX Intermodal Terminal. These are all things that are enhancing and bringing business and people to the area. And then you're downtown trying to redevelop. You're not doing a lot of new construction, I think you were telling me. It's a lot of redevelopment. Tell me about some of the, the progress, because this is not just business, is it? Is it retail? And some, uh, residential as well? A little bit of residential, that's just starting. Uh, it, historically, it's been primarily um, office and retail. Uh, we have some special purpose um, uh, buildings as well. We, we acquired the two General Telephone and Verizon um, switch centers, and um, there, between those two buildings, it's almost a quarter of a million square feet that has now been uh, leased up to companies that have a requirement for, for high bandwidth, if you will. Um, just echoing some of the things that, that Todd said, I think Winter Haven, things are really lining up well for, for the community between Legoland and CSX. Uh, Baycare is getting ready to to uh, to do some very interesting things in the downtown area. Um, Florida Poly is not that far away. Polk State is doing great things, and um, we think in a, a downtown that is uh, vibrant and, and working is uh, an important part of that whole redevelopment story. And um, uh, some of the things we've been doing here in the last couple of years has been uh, we've acquired 
four different buildings, existing buildings, and have renovated them, um, and um, and then leased them out, primarily office and, and a little bit of retail. Well, actually, but but they're not buildings that were built in nineteen. 19- 89. They're no, these were, were hundred year old buildings, buildings back in the 20s and right. 30s, and um, we've we've tried to retain the the historic nature of a lot of these uh, properties to the extent that we can. At the same time, we want to make sure that these buildings are, in terms of electrical and mechanical, that are upgraded with with. You know, if you're not familiar with Bottom downtown Winter Haven, it's, it'd be, you need to go down and visit it because the, the streetscaping and the landscaping, it's all blending in together. And like you said, you have a mixture of all sorts of different businesses, some restaurants, some small shops, some offices. So it's really kind of interesting and exciting how this is all coming together. I want to take us on a little bit of a tour, so to speak, uh, literally coming out of your office. Your office is there on Central. Well, even the building itself where you're located is, a, is one of your redevelopment plans or projects, isn't it? Correct. It was a building that was built back in the 20s that had, had fallen on hard times. Times and uh, we actually acquired it in a, in a foreclosure sale a couple of years back, and uh, uh, we had an exist another tenant that needed our space in another building, and so we use that as an opportunity to redevelop this building. Now, if you were to head, I'm, I hope I get my directions correct. Head east, you have a couple of interesting neighbors. I think one is the uh, the photographers, uh, Pot Hay Studios, Mike Pothas, and, 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 Pot and somebody else that's just on the other side of him. I'm not. Quite sure who that might be. That's my office. That's your right. office. office. Yes, we uh, we've been tenants of six ten for about a year and a half, two years now, mm-hmm. and um, we're just about ready to get our roof fixed. <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're outstanding landlords, and they've done a nice job with the redevelopment of the projects that they've taken on. So. We're, we're very happy to be uh, part of their team. Well, hopefully he's making his payments on time. All right, let's uh, check. <laughs> let's go the other direction, I guess, west towards the park. Uh, that's right across the street from your office, or kind of catty corner, I guess, is uh, speaking of historic, the, the theater there? The Ritz, the Ritz Theater, theater. which um, d- dates back to the, to the 30s. Um, and uh, the building has been substantially renovated. Uh, the interior is, 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 um, is very nicely done. They're having events there on a regular basis. The exterior, that's the, the last phase of the renovation. I believe that's, that's scheduled here in the next year or so. But it's a, it's a great amenity to have in the, in the downtown. And right across the street from the Rich Theater, you have a, kind of like a little corridor arcade area, I guess. A lot of little businesses it in was, there. It was known as the Arcade Building, and it was um, uh, got the, the center arcade that goes all the way through the block. And um, there are a number of retail establishments in there. The, the best cheese shop in the county, I would recommend it to anybody. Um, but yes, it's a, that, that, that's a nice building for us. And one of the projects that looks like it's kind of currently underway, kind of down on the corner, is the, the Man Building. The old Man Building, and it was built about the same time the Ritz Theater, back in the day the Williamson Theater was built. And um, another one of the properties that has sort of fallen on, on, on hard times, we acquired the building last year and are in the process of a renovation. We've got a tenant that will be occupying uh, part of the building. Um, we're, we're in a bit of a rush because they, they would like to be in here in, in July, August time frame. There's quite a bit of, of work to do of this year. We've got, a, we've got quite a bit of work to do. <laughs> you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to make this really quick. All right, they've got some work to do. Heading on way, up west, you hit to the, the park. Now, that's obviously not part of your redevelopment, but that's a big draw of, along with the businesses, isn't it? And, they're, and the city is trying to do uh, things with the park to bring events there and people there. The city and Main Street and the Chamber, they hold functions there. There's just about something there every weekend. Uh, typically, it, it could be picking in the park on Friday nights with Nat West and his crew, uh, Art Walk, different things that they do to bring folks downtown. They eat in the local restaurants, they shop in the local stores. So um, our, our downtown is thriving and uh, it's doing nothing but getting better and better. So we're very happy with it. and. Um, we're excited to see the changes. Yeah, and, and I look at li- there's a lot of things we're not going to be able to talk about them all. I mean, some of them are your projects, some of them aren't, but they're restaurants like Arabella's or uh, Gourmet Goodies, but also a Mexican place, which is one of your projects, all coming in there uh, in that strip right there by the uh, the parks. It's kind of exciting to see all this coming together. And it all it all kind of works together. We've we've recently signed leases with two two uh, new tenants that will be between the two of them bringing close to 90 to 100 people, uh, new employees working in the downtown core. Well, that's good for the restaurants, it's good, it's good for the coffee shop and the retail. So it all it all kind of works together. And the library, the new library is right there mm-hmm. in that area. It doesn't really look like a library. It says library on it, so I know that's what it is, but it doesn't it doesn't look like a "Quote unquote traditional library," which is kind Wasn't of that an old Win Dixie back in the day. It was, I, I believe, it was, I believe it was when yes. we were kids. The county owned it for a while. Right, and it, it was, was a, a county annex, mm-hmm. and then we moved 
uh, that county annex out to the Gil Jones University That's right. um, on 17, and then the library took it. And it's a great place to have the library located downtown as one of the real anchors. That was a real key decision to move the library downtown on the park. It brings lots of people in on a, on a daily basis. And, and you mentioned a grocery store. That kind of reminds me of just a little further, I guess, east of there is a, another former grocery store, which is now a, a church. We had a building. That, Church. It was an old A and P grocery store okay. that it was was functionally functionally obsolete, and we really didn't have enough parking to support a, a redevelopment for a conventional office use. But we were um, uh, approached by a group in um, Heartland Church, and we were able to work out a work out a, a partnership with them, if you will, and uh, we converted the old grocery store into a into a church. And it doesn't look like one today. And uh, and they were able to expand. They they moved their location from Cypress Gardens Boulevard into the downtown core, and. Um, 12, 13, 1400 people um, a weekend are now coming into the downtown. And on Sundays they stop and eat at the local restaurants. The restaurants so, and I mean, everybody benefits from the work that 610 has been doing. And it's funny, when you talk about parking with the church, their needs on the weekend, that made me think about parking during the week, the parking garage, which kind of doesn't, again, look like a parking garage the way they have it decorated. If you didn't know it was a garage, you would think it was just part of the other buildings of downtown. Uh, they've done an outstanding job with the paint scheme, with the landscaping. And uh, I think it's free all day parking. And, it is, it is. And um, you know, which really benefits his properties. And, and 610 doesn't own everything downtown. So the other folks that own buildings downtown, it's good for them. They can park there. They're not parking on the streets so people can get in and out of the restaurants uh, and, and the retail by parking on the streets. If that's I, I would put a plug in for the, the, the city of Winter Haven has done a great job, we think, in terms of the, the public infrastructure. The parking right. garage is a great example, but all of the other streetscaping and landscaping and redevelopment of the parks, there's a project coming up that will be included in their new bond issue. It's called South Park, which is sort of the last piece of the puzzle, if you will, from the US 17 realignment. But the, the city has done a great job, for, in, in our opinion, in terms of that public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And maybe w as we run out of time, because we got to get him, he's busy. Busy. But uh, but there's an empty uh, lot or square block, I guess, that you've torn down the building that used to be there. Now you were telling me earlier this is going to be designated for medical. We have uh, we're in the planning stages of a uh, three-story, 35,000 uh, approximately square foot uh, medical office building. Uh, it's right on First Street. The proximity to the hospital um, we think make, makes that an ideal location for that use. A lot of exciting things going on in downtown yep. Winter Haven, and, and it's exciting because when all these things come together, residential and business and restaurants and the streetscaping, it, it draws people there. There's a reason to be there other than going and visiting a particular business, and that's what you want, especially on the weekends and when all these events. Let me ask you real quickly because we're around time, but 610, people may be seeing the name, maybe wonder, what is 610? I was the saying my dad always had that if you got six out of 10 right, you were beating the odds. Um, we prefer eight or nine out of 10, but we'll take six. I think we maybe have to rename them nine, nine out of 10 or whatever. They're doing, doing a great job. And Commissioner, I know the, these are the kind of success stories, whether it's in Winter Haven, but here in Polk County, that are possible and you like to see. Absolutely, and this is the private sector taking the lead, putting their money at risk, and uh, hopefully turning a profit at the end of the day. And um, I know another, uh, other cities have looked at how can we duplicate what they're doing in Winter Haven or Lakeland, and um, so I, I'm excited for Polk County. I really am. Well, Bud Strang, he is the CEO of uh, 610. We'll call him 910, you know, because that's how well they're doing. Officially 610. And, of course, Commissioner Dancy, we appreciate both Thank of them you. from Winter Haven. So this yep. is where they live. This is where their homes are. And uh, this is where their hearts are as well. I appreciate you guys coming on talking with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about hurricane season. We don't like to think about hurricanes because usually they stay away from us. But we still need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We'll tell you all about it as the show rolls on. Stay with us. Please have a seat. I'll be honest. Your resume is not what I'm used to. I know. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need a hard worker. Good. I've got two part-time jobs and to help my parents pay the bills. I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but... Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for.
your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find, cultivate, and train a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Earthquakes you see in movies are one thing, but real life is a completely different animal. Just because you can't predict an earthquake doesn't mean that you can't prepare for one. In the event of a real earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake and practice what to do to keep you and your family safe in the event of a real earthquake. And you'll be seen as a hero by your family and your loved ones. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake today. You're twice as likely to die in a home fire when you're 65 or older. So make sure you have working smoke alarms, stay in the kitchen when cooking, and practice an escape plan. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov because fire is everyone's fight. Welcome back to the Commissioner's Report, and we're glad that you're joining us here in the month of June. So June is hurricane season, so we thought we'd bring some experts in to talk about why you need to be prepared and why that's so important. Paul Womble, he's the Program Manager with Polk County Emergency Management. Paul, appreciate you being here, first yep, of all. Thank you, Mike. Glad to be here. It's hard to believe hurricane season, June to November, six months out of the year. That's half the year, and yet we don't seem to focus on it too much. And until maybe like one, one's getting close by, and that's not a good way to look at a hurricane, is it? No, no, the, uh, you know, the big media attention you know, is the few weeks leading up to uh, hurricane season, but you're, you're right, everybody should have a plan. Um, and now's the time, now's really a good time if you don't, if folks don't, so we'll talk a little bit about that today. But also, it's important to have a plan all year. We have other hazards and, and threats here. This is paradise where we live, but there are things that can impact uh, families and businesses. So making sure that they're prepared and ready to go is very important. There are a lot of storms that can roll in our area in a heartbeat and that you have no much advance notice and you got to be prepared. And, and like I said, if you get hit by a tornado or a, a flood or something, it's going to cause, you're going to have a bad year. Co correct. It, it only takes one. We talk about hurricane season, uh, even walking in here today, for what are the numbers, what are the predictions? And those are, uh, those are somewhat useful, but it only takes one. You know, hurricane Andrew, uh, when it hit that year, well, it, was, it was the only one. It was supposed to be a, a, a slow season, and, and look what happened in South Florida. So um, having a plan, again, being prepared for all the things that could happen here you know, is important. You know, I was hearing people talk about, they say in some ways when they look at the projected number of name storms we're going to have and then, you know, all these kind of things, that's maybe good information for the guys working on the inside, but for the public, it really doesn't doesn't really need that they don't need to know that because they need to be prepared regardless correct it almost it almost gives a false sense of security right. it's a low number the probabilities are low so well maybe I won't do anything that's that's the wrong that's the wrong attitude to take and it's funny if you look back just 11 years ago 2004 hurricane season Polk County thinking they were maybe going to be safe got hit with three storms in about a, a month and a half I three, think three storms and yeah in uh, in that hurricane season very unprecedented that many uh, that storm's crossing it through the same county. And it, before that it had been since Hurricane Donna, uh, a long time, you know, over 40 years since we'd been hit before. And, and again, it's, uh, if you're a sports fan, you know, all streaks come to an end. And <laughs> That's um, right. that was one, you know, we, we went a long time without having any impacts, major impacts anyway, right. here in the county. And then those, uh, those three storms came and reminded us that, that that can happen. Right, well, we're hoping that streak continues for a long time, but we're going to be smart and we're going to be prepared just in case. There's an event coming up. I want Obviously, this show airs throughout the entire month of June, so you may not catch this in time. But on June 10th, there's a, you're having a preparedness night, ready night, at the, with the Lakeland Flying Tigers. Tell us about that. Correct. Uh, that's a partnership that we've had for uh, the last few years now with the Tigers. And uh, it's basically a, uh, an opportunity to come out. Um, it's Wednesday nights during the summer or all-you-can-eat night, which has nothing to do with why we do the event then, but it's a good draw. It's a good deal. There'll be um, uh, activities for kids with, and trivia. Uh, we'll have a whole host of our partners there with displays and giveaways, and it's just an opportunity to come and, and meet some of the folks that um, uh, try to take care of us, help take care of us, some of the agencies that would respond, but also pick up some information so people can make their plan. How. Uh, your disaster plan might be different than mine. I, I know if we have a storm, I'm going to be at work. Um, but other folks might have children or dependents or pets, um, all those things. So you need to understand what you need to do uh, for you and your family or your business. Right. Uh, we want to keep businesses open. That's very important. So businesses having a plan uh, is just as important as, as anyone else. 
Yeah, sometimes I think businesses have a tendency to forget about that because some of their employees maybe I got to go to take care of my family. So they have to adjust and the different things as well. I want to give you a website. You'll see it throughout the, our discussion here, polk-county.net slash prepare. You can always go there and get information, shelters, things you need in a, for a plan, important phone numbers. It's all there. It's a good resource. And also, these uh, resources are in a, a nice little uh, handout that are available at just all the Publix is here. Correct. We, we produce with the, um, uh, the tourism and sports marketing folks every year. A, um, we call it our annual shelter map. Mm -hmm. But it has a lot more than the shelter listing on there. On the, um, on the back has those phone numbers. Our evacuation policy, one of the things we have uh, in Inland County, we don't have pre-identified evacuation zones like you see a lot. Uh, the coastal counties have those, and that's because they have storm surge right. from a tropical storm, a hurricane. We don't have those here, but our evacuation policy is really covers pretty much uh, the entire county, really it does the entire county. But if you live in a, a structure, a mobile home or an RV or something that um, could be impacted from winds, you need to have a plan uh, for somewhere to go. Public shelters should be the last resort, last right. plan, uh, a family member, a church member, an associate, you know, someone you know that lives in a uh, substantial home that uh, is, is safe, you know, may have some shutters. You know, you should go there, public shelters, or we have those spaces available. Uh, that's a partnership with the Polk County School Board and, and the American Red Cross. But basically, that's gonna be a whole lot of people in a space um, not very compact, or is compact, a lot mm -hmm. of folks in a small place. Not the best place to be in, a, in an emergency, in a disaster, so that, uh, that should be part of your plan. Also, our evacuation policy is folks that live in low-lying areas or those that traditionally flood. Uh, even on an afternoon thunderstorm, if several inches of rain in a short amount of time floods your streets, floods your neighborhoods, you know, if we have a, even a slow moving tropical storm could bring a foot or more of rain, right. those folks need to have a place to go and a plan to go as well. You know, when you think about uh, an emergency as it gets closer, a lot of people are suddenly making a spur of the moment decision that we want to leave, and then suddenly everyone's on the road. Right. Uh, so having an idea even beforehand, are we staying, are we leaving, is that important? Yeah, it, it is important. Uh, the, we recommend you stay in the county. Again, find someone, uh, a place that you can go that's safe, safer than where you are if you need to evacuate. The challenge with leaving the area is even uh, as accurate and as more advanced with technology as the Hurricane Center has become, it still may take them a day or two to really get a good, uh, before landfall, a good grasp on where that storm is actually going to go. So if folks wait till the last minute and everybody waits till the last minute, then there's congestion on the roadways. I'm assuming if you're going to stay at home or like you said, somewhere perhaps in uh, the county, uh, you have to be prepared because you're not going to maybe go out and just run to the store and get a gallon of milk. Right. And so probably in reality, you need to be prepared for like about a, at least a minimum of three days. At least three days. And without even electricity, right? Correct. And, you know, power can go out. Um, it probably will go out in a, even, you know, in an afternoon thunderstorm uh, causes power outages. That's common. Hurricane or a high wind event could call wide, cause widespread power outages. So, yeah, having um, a way to, especially if you have medications that have to stay cold, even water to be able to flush the toilet uh, or, or you boil water to drink and, and to prepare some food with. Having a gallon per person per day on hand um, is the recommendation. And you know, if you wait again till a storm is approaching, that suddenly all these supplies might get a little expensive too, but if you kind of take it, water's gonna be sitting on your shelf for several months and be fine. Yeah, we, uh, we recommend you certainly going, uh, getting ready for hurricane season, but even all year, pick up an extra canned uh, something or two of vegetables or something that you could, uh, you could open, but you don't, you don't have to cook. Um, so if you add that with each shopping trip, you know, add a few extra dollars, uh, but in the long run, you're prepared and you'll be glad you, you know, invested those you know, a few extra dollars when, if the time comes when you need those supplies. Now, there are obviously people that may be perhaps senior citizens or people with health issues that they really uh, can't move or move themselves, special needs. Uh, how does that work? Correct. Uh, county emergency management offices in Florida uh, maintain special needs registries, which is basically for people can pre-register with us if they need help in an emergency, whether they're oxygen dependent or they have some type of medical equipment that requires electricity, uh, we will call them in a, if we have a hurricane come, we call that list. We've got about 4,000 uh, people in our registry currently, it stays about that number. So we call everybody and say, hey, if, do you need transportation? Do you have a place to go? And then if they say we need 
uh, assistance to evacuate, then we work through the, the county transit agencies uh, to actually come and pick those folks up and take them to the three pre-identified special needs shelters that we have that do have emergency power, they have generators. You know, something that's important, if, if like you said, if you're going to a shelter, what should be a last resort, uh, you can't just show up with a, a couple of cats, a couple of dogs. I mean, I, there are some shelters available, but we most have, of them don't take animals. Uh, we have pet friendly three uh, shelters on our list that are identified as pet friendly. And they really are for folks that have pets, that are their family members. Um, you know, we, we learned a lot over the years about people will not evacuate, they won't leave without their pets. So we have some places identified for those. Um, but the pets should be just part of that plan, whether you, you uh, have a kennel, you know, if you have pets and you're going to evacuate, whether it's to a public shelter or to a friend or family member, you have to work those details out with supplies uh, and the issues around taking care of pets in an emergency. You know, what's interesting behind the scenes, uh, people don't realize this, but you're preparing sometimes year round, uh, especially this time of year, though, with uh, getting the organizations, the sheriff department, all the, the fire department, kind of almost like mock scenarios. So when, so when something happens, it's important to, to listen to, to what you're advising us to do, isn't it? It, it is. You know, we, that's really the focus day to day of what our emergency management program is all about. It really is readiness. And with with uh, all of the cities, you know, we have 17 cities plus the county uh, agencies, volunteer nonprofits, constitutional agencies. Really, our job is to make sure that all those folks know what each other does. They know who they are and what they do in an emergency. So we do. We we actually finished almost a whole week of uh, hurricane exercise activities last week. Brought in all the partners and uh, did some training on our software and really brought those groups together just to to make sure that everyone's on the same sheet of music going into hurricane season. Yeah, because once, uh, once the storm approaches, then it can get a little more chaotic. You gotta be organized and planned. Again, these uh, hurricane brochures, or whatever we wanna call them, are available. They're free uh, at yes. Publix uh, supermarkets. And also, if you go to that website, which we've been putting up on the screen, you uh, polk-county.net slash prepare, it's all there for you as well, as well as a detailed list of things you need for your survival kit, all the shelters, where they're located, and all those kind of things. And again, I think it's important stressing that a shelter is not the first choice. It's a, a last resort option, it, isn't it? It, it, should be the, it should be your last choice if you have to evacuate in an emergency. When you think about, the, again, how fortunate we've been here and we don't have the storm surge issues, and storm surge for, for the cities and the towns on the coast, that's what really is, is bad. But the winds, the trees falling over, all those kind Correct. of things, it's a, it can be a big mess. And so even if you think you're going to survive, it's going to, it could be a long time if you don't have power or water or any kind of food. Yep, if you think what, if you went home today, one, well, uh, you couldn't be watching this show, what can you not do at home without power? And if it's a few hours, that's an inconvenience. But if it's a few days, um, food's gonna go bad. You know, stuff in the freezer and the refrigerator can't get online. A lot of us are dependent on technology to do those kind of, you know, to do banking, do business, do all those kind of things. So what will you do? You know, how will you let family members that don't live in the area know you're safe? That should be part of your plan. Uh, there's several apps. Uh, the Red Cross has an app. Um, and there's all kinds from the TV stations. Uh, and also social media. So you can find our social media, um, Facebook and Twitter, uh, as well as some other social media outlets, again, on, on the county website. And uh, we use those as some of the tools in the toolbox to get the word out, certainly pre-storm. Um, but again, you know, several days after the storm, if we have no power, uh, simple things like knowing which radio station to turn to. We really partner with the Hall Communications uh, stations and, and some of the others as well. Those are the main ones. Those are all listed on the map. Right. So unless you listen to those radio stations every day, you, you may not know where they are on the dial, uh, AM or FM. Right. So having some of that information available yeah. is important. And have batteries because if there's no power, That's right. you can't, you can't uh, just plug in and go. Well, Paul, appreciate you, uh, all the work that you and all the staff there do uh, year round getting us prepared for these six months. Again, hoping we don't really need all this, uh, but we have to be prepared. And I appreciate you talking with us about that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again. Hurricane season goes all the way to the end of November. So this is not just something to pay attention to now, but be prepared, be ready, get prepared a little bit as you go and it'll go a long ways. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll catch you next month for another edition of the Commissioner's Report. Take care, everyone.